Welcome to That's Good Sports, the weakest, bitchiest sports show on the internet. I'm Brandon Perna, and uh, I'm going to predict the Seahawks and Jaguars game in two minutes or more today. This episode is sponsored by BetDSI.com, one of the best sports books out there. Use my promo code GOOD25, and BetDSI is going to give you $25 free to wager however you want. Any game, any sport, it's free money I'm giving you. The two minutes starts now. The 8-4 Seahawks at the 8-4 Jaguars, and the Jags are two and a half favorites. As long as the Seahawks don't lose Russell Wilson, they have a chance to win. That's not a reference to the Seahawks injuries piling up. I mean, literally lose Russell Wilson. He's very small and easy to misplace. And as Pete Carroll ages, his memory slips from time to time. During their last road game, the team went three hours before they realized they left the little guy at Levi Stadium. They had to take the bus all the way back there. He was obviously crying and very upset, but they've worked it out. The Water Birds are coming off of that huge win over America's Birds last weekend. The team I believe is the best in the league, the Eagles. Uh, this will be a fun game to watch because Saxonville didn't get their nickname entirely due to the amount of teabagging they do to each other in the locker room. It's also because they take down quarterbacks like politicians and Hollywood execs take down their pants when nobody fucking asked. Jesus Christ. The Jags have 45 sacks on the season, and Russell Wilson, whose nickname should be Snake, or Kevin from Home Alone, is one of the hardest QBs to bring down. Imagine if he ever gets a great offensive line. Uh, I recommend the Jaguars learn some snake charming because when Wilson gets in trouble, he runs backwards and snakes from left to right, and for whatever reason, pursuing defenders cannot take him down. The one thing Seattle may have found against the Eagles is a running back in Mike Davis. This guy looks like the next Thomas Rawls when Thomas Rawls looked like the next Marshawn Lynch. Now, this next statement might be shocking, but it's true. Blake Bortles was one of the best quarterbacks on the field last week. He balled out 309 passing yards, two touchdowns, and zero. Yes, zero interceptions for Blake Bortles. Am I confident Blake Bortles can repeat this feat against the Seahawks defense? No, he was playing against the Colts for fuck's sake. Even Chuck Pagano was like, I don't believe Bortles will have a Groundhog Day-like performance against the Seahawks. If you don't get that reference, fuck off. The reason I'm going to take Seattle, and trust me, I want Jacksonville to win, I want it really bad, is because the Jags struggled to rush the ball against the Colts. They'll need to run the ball to win this game, and over the last two weeks, Fournette has averaged 2.1 yards per carry and 2.9 yards per carry, with one rushing TD in the last four games. I need to see that element of Jacksonville's game return before I start picking them against good teams again, uh, and Seattle is seventh best against the run right now. Plus, Alan Hearns, Marquise Lee, and Jalen Ramsey are all banged up. So I'm picking the Seahawks. But the X factor for the Jags uh, for a victory is the Seahawks injury report. Michael Bennett, Bobby Wagner, Marcus Smith, Nazir Jones, Jimmy Graham, Dwayne Brown, Ode Ibushi, and Cam Chancellor. Just basically half of their defense and half of their offensive line. No big deal. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Share these videos on Facebook. I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna. If you want to talk about football, that's when I'm banking on people enjoying forever, even though 